Anyway, thank you all for coming here on a Thursday night, 5 December. Appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here. So hopefully you all are going to stay until 9 p.m., right? And we have some great uh, speakers here. And my name is Si Wing Yi from the Yi Wilson Network. Uh, it's all about networking, as you guys have been doing it already. So uh, everybody, that's, that's what it's all about, right? And, you know, as investors, you need to uh, have a team, you need to have the resources. And uh, on a monthly basis, we have this so-called club meeting. And, and, uh, to, uh, Give you guys oh, me. Uh, education, right? So you can be an informed investor, so you have the ability to, to, to uh, execute on your action plan and, and, and create wealth through real estate. And anyway, so uh, we have we can have another event uh, this Saturday. Let me keep this open. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This Saturday, in the morning, uh, 10 a.m., in this room, we have another live event. So we're kind of rare on a, uh, but this was the last, the last event of the year. So, and uh, the tax planning for 2019 and beyond, and my good friend and colleague, Richard Smith, back there, gonna do the live presentation. <coughs> so thank you for doing it again. Many of you already came to his presentation two months ago here. And a lot of value out of it. So uh, anyway, without further ado, tonight's agenda. Tonight's agenda will be uh, supposedly my uh, uh, Ryan Shell is supposed to start off uh, this evening. He's supposed to talk about op uh, opportunity zone, but uh, a few hours ago he, he, he called me. He said uh, his uh, his mother died uh, mm -hmm. unexpectedly, so he could not make it. Ryan Shell, the CPA, he's a go-to tech real tax expert, he knows everything, all the intricacies about opportunity zones, right? So, but he'll be back in, you know, you know, next year or so to do a live presentation and, and uh, in fact, I have, I have Gene to, uh, to do a video with him to talk about opportunity zones. So, Gene has this bomb bomb uh, software similar to mine. We have, we have, we have the you told me about bomb bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's great. We produce all, all the great videos, videos. So anyway, the agenda for this evening is, so, uh, so uh, yeah, Richard, he's a, he, you know, he's a uh, invited guest. In case uh, any one of you want to ask a few questions about Opportunity Zone, Richard is my tax guy. will give you some pointers. But, uh, but then again, my, my, my other uh, uh, guest speakers, they are also pretty well versed in opportunity zones, although the disclaimer is such that they are, we are not tax experts, we are not licensed except Richard. <laughs> licensed tax experts, so everything we say, you have to go and consult with your tax advisor or what, when you go back home and go over your, your tax strategy. So the agenda would be, I will finish my intro in a couple of minutes, then uh, Jim Gillum, Many of you already know she's been with my network for the past ten years or so. I lost track, and uh, she's gonna talk about opportunity zones. Even better, she can talk about how to execute on your uh, uh, building plan, uh, action plan using opportunity zone, uh, which is. Uh, and she also talk about uh, several other communities in Central Florida, which is tremendous. I love her products all these years, and of course she brought in. Two special guests, the developer, the builder, uh, they sit right in front, okay? They're gonna have an opportunity to speak. So that's great, and uh, from uh, Palm Bay and Ponciana, and uh, Brock and, and uh, uh, Wagner. So, uh, and, uh, so it's, it's great, you know, it's not too often the builder or developer come to the live event you know, to talk, so which is a great opportunity. So they're very, very busy building great uh, communities for our investors. And of course, property management, I mean, I've been wanting to talk about property management so much, and of course, Tom is here to talk about property management for 15 minutes. Uh, so crucial, right? And do a video, you and Tom. Uh, it makes a break to uh, Let's do a 40 minute video on Bam Bam mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to talk about property management. Uh, so critical. And real, real to medics, our property management in Central Florida, been managing our investors' property 
all these years in the 100 mile radius of Central Florida. So it's just so amazing. But uh, before I introduce Jane to come on, uh, to come up to the podium, uh, opportunity zones is just uh, some of you are thinking is uh, very complicated. In, in a way, it is kind of yes. But in a way, if you surround yourself with, uh, with uh, a team of uh, financial professionals to understand uh, opportunity zones, so you, you, so you don't really need to become an expert. You just buy, you need to buy the properties, locating the opportunity zones. But I want to say this one thing is that opportunity zones supposed to be like uh, the IRS and the U.S. Treasury. They, uh, they have identified some census tract opportunity zone where uh, supposedly a depressed area where you can, you know, economically, economically depressed area need to, uh, need to have some stimulants. So as an investor, you can go in there in these areas in different parts of the country. Supposedly there are eight, like 6,000 opportunity zones all over the country. But uh, it's not all about tax benefit. The key is if you, if you uh, if you invest for more than 10 years and you sell your property, then you're not going to you know, trigger capital gain. So it's a tremendous tax benefit, but more importantly, the, tonight's presentation, not only you can achieve long-term great tax benefit, you can hold on to your property for more than 10 years, but you have to buy, buy the right kind of properties. So my research, and I'm sure Richard and any one of you can, can, uh, can validate what I'm trying to say, is that just because an opportunity zone is a great tax benefit does not mean you should, you know, do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you're not investing strictly for tax benefit. The investment itself has to make sense. And when I researched this past uh, nine months about the opportunity zones, uh, you know, so far, if you look at YouTube or whatever and, and other research, uh, the website, all the Opportunity Zone uh, people, they're presenting like this very complicated uh, kind of project, like multi-billion dollar project where uh, you invest in a developed land or, you know, 1,000 unit apartment building or, or some syndication, right? You have to be a, a accredited investor where you need like at least $1 million of liquid net worth and you have to be 200 grand salary, very, very difficult to enter into Opportunity Zone products, right? There's so many of these Wall Street hedge funds bringing this kind of product where uh, they, 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 they overcomplicate things, right? Uh, to me, those investments are very, very risky. So, Gene and I, we talked about it, say, how can we bring Opportunity Zone uh, real estate property to, our, to my network? So the best way to do it is uh, create a opportunity zone uh, fund uh, as an individual. You don't have to go through the, the you know, those, those commercial, big time, complicated, high risk uh, products, right? You could create your own fund. It's not that hard, right? And then you uh, buy in an area that you're familiar which is the, the thing where I've been promoting all these years since, I, since 2004 I've been doing this, buy single family home in duplexes, right, those cookie cutter single family homes in the good areas. And finally, uh, when you buy an opportunity zone, it does not mean, on paper it's a depressed area, but what I've been finding out really is some of this supposedly opportunity zone that's been designated by the U.S. Treasury, supposedly be a deprived area, deprived area depressed area, but you'd be shocked mm -hmm. to, you'd be a totally amazed and, and just that the, the kind of opportunity zone product that we can present to you, not only in Central Florida, but in Central Texas also, mm -hmm. where the opportunity zone areas are really good high quality areas. They are not dilapidated. They're, they, they're just a regular area. You wouldn't know it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity zone. So you can buy those products, those single family home and duplexes and whatever, with very high cash flow, good tenants, and good, good economic structure, everything else, right? I mean, you see, see. So, so the perception is, opportunity zones is you buy the best area, but the reality is the way we doing it, Central Florida and Central Texas. Central Texas gonna have, have uh, Saturday. We can talk about uh, opportunity zone also, amazing opportunity in Central Florida and Central Texas. But tonight we talk about Central Florida, and it's just shocking how you could, you could. You know, you could have so much benefit buying in opportunity zones or tax benefits. So, 
Uh, did I explain it correctly? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's so hard to explain, right? It is but, hard to explain. But it's not that hard. At the end of the day, is you buying a single family home or duplex, brand new construction, but then with cash flow. And in fact, you, you we can make the argument you can buy what Jim can present this evening, you're gonna buy something. Uh, even if not opportunity zone that uh, she's promoting, you should still buy in this, despite of that. But you're getting in tax benefit uh, in addition to great cash flow, great appreciation, great area, you know, so forth and so on, right? And it's gonna make, am I right, Jim? So, uh, yeah, and the thing that, that's interesting is the governors of each state chose the opportunity where they were. So you can imagine that they chose some that were a little bit nicer than others, and oh, we you bought a piece of property yeah. in, a, a, in an area, they didn't even know what an opportunity zone. We thought it was just a great area, right? Mm -hmm. so, so it had a lot to do with that. But the big thing, just for a regular normal investor, I would really um, speak to um, bonus depreciation because everybody can get that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just so, so much stuff. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Uh, it's a camcorder. We've been tonight's being recorded for the first time. Yeah, YouTube video. We're gonna put that up. Everybody been asking for it, so you'll get it. So, but you get you get the first hand. You get it live. You get the you get the you know you got the the real products coming to you tonight instead of uh, a week later or whatever. So first come, first serve, you know, early birds gets the warm, you guys are early birds, so uh, you got opportunity to uh, to buy something, <laughs> hopefully. So let me see what else. Uh, oh yeah, tonight, uh, this presentation ends around 7.15, uh, in about an hour and 15 minutes. We have a second speaker around 7.30 to 8.15. We can have Mike Ryan, it's gonna be here. Are you here yet, Mike? Oh, he's all the way back. The door. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great, great, Mike. Uh, but uh, you know, Ryan Shaw is not going to be here tonight because we have a, a family emergency, so we're not going to talk about real opportunity zone. But Richard can can play the opportunity. Richard Smith, opportunity zone expert, even though he's uh, slowly getting into it. Right, Richard. See, when, the one thing I wanted to share about opportunity zone, we've got some people who know it really well. That's why I came tonight. To listen to Ryan about the thing that surprised me, you know, the law came out December 17, took a year for it to be formalized. Then they went to each state and allowed them to pick. There's 8,800 opportunity zones throughout the country. And, but the thing that surprised me is that the quality difference in certain states, I think you might have said that, tremendous difference. Yep. <laughs> you know, so one area <clears throat> where the city wants the people to improve. And I went to opportunity zones in San Jose, and I, I didn't want to go there. You know, I didn't feel safe. Right. But then I went to Florida and talked to Brock and Wagner, and I'd live there. You know, these are beautiful areas to yep. build in. Yep. So, you know, you I... don't have a lot I, of bad areas. Yeah, yeah, it just depends on the state. Yep. What the state decided they wanted to use, and called opportunity zones. And, you right. know, to, I mean, no. That's right. Totally agree, Richard. See, see what I'm saying? I mean... Anyway, well, Mike Ryan, uh, by the way, from 7.30 to 8.15, going to talk about uh, how to do, how to, uh, <laughs> uh, how, to, how to do a 10.31 in, uh, from the highly appreciable California real estate assets into something, something we don't know yet. And also, he can talk about strategies about how, if you would sell your principal home that you lived in previously, how you can do an uh, exchange into something else as well. So. Uh, so, so I don't, I don't want to spill the beans. I don't know what, what kind of beans you can spill yet. I, like the rest of the audience, wanna, can't wait what you have to say from 7.30 to 8.15. So 8.15, 8.20, uh, he's up with his Q&A. Q&A from 8.20 to 9 p.m. 40 minutes of Q&A. I know we have a lot, a lot of great questions. Also, tomorrow I have a mentoring lunch from 11, you got the, some of you, many of you got the email, right? Tomorrow, uh, mentoring lunch, 11.30 to 2.30 uh, at the uh, outside, outside, uh, uh, triplet, uh, Chipotle, right? Across the street, right? Two blocks away. So come, and because Jim Gillum and, uh, and the developer, Brock and Wagner couldn't be there, right? Just to do some one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-two, -two, whatever. Right, tomorrow, Mentoring lunch, you got the email, invitation, you know, if you have time tomorrow Friday, right, take, you know, take two hours for, hour for lunch, whatever. 
come out and meet with Gene Gillum and the developer one on one, sitting right outside Chipotle. Okay? Uh, so 11, 11.30 to 2.30, that block of three hours. So, so come, just show, and we'll uh, do what we do one on one. Anything else? Uh, start in the morning, like I said, 10 a.m. to uh, 12.30. 10 a.m., which is myth, once again, we're going to talk about tax planning for 2019 and beyond. A lot of multiple topics he already covered. If you can download the agenda, uh, you will see the list of topics you can cover. Then, then from, uh, no, no, actually, uh, Ken Renner, once again, going to talk about Central Texas from 10 to uh, 11 a.m., okay, Central Texas. And also, Opportunity Zones in Central Texas. Also, is it amazing being part of my network? You get some, you get some cutting edge investment opportunities. Some of you, Keith, for example, Keith Chow, Keith, uh, Keith said, oh, I'm not going to do the Opportunity Zone with those big time commercial, multi billion dollar project where it requires 3,000 investors to get in there, not knowing what you're buying. And, and Keith said, I remember what you said, Keith. You said, you bring me Opportunity Zone where I can buy single family homes that I know the area, that I know the cash flow, I know the numbers, and I will consider it. Keith, well, you got your wish. <laughs> You're getting that exactly. <laughs> okay, you know, I, I'm sorry, I can talk all day long. So, without further ado, my, oh, let me tell you about Jean Gillum. She's been with me for, you know, part of my network in Central Florida for the past 10 years. She has so much she, she, connection in Central Florida. It's amazing. She bought us, our investors, different communities, uh, new construction from, from <laughs> I forgot from Hudson to Lakeland to to uh, Winter Haven to Daytona, all over to Florida. I mean, for years, all those great products. You know, many of my investors bought it, and they have you know, they have probably have appreciated the product cash flow so much. You have Jimmy Gillen has so much connection. She's doing so much business, hundreds and hundreds of transactions per, per per month. I mean, I mean, you are just awesome. I mean, I mean, she's she's. she's Jingle has this magnetic personality where she, you know, she networked with everybody. Now she brings this great business from Palm Bay and Poinciana. You know, tremendous, right? It's just, oh, anyway, I'm done talking. <laughs> oh, you guys are tired of hearing from me anyway. So without further ado, Jingle! Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, and I thank all my, my whole entourage that came with me because we were, were excited to get here. And there's so many things, but don't think about opportunity zones tonight. Don't think about bonus depreciation, which is really, really good. Because tomorrow, you're going to hear, or Saturday morning, you're going to speak. And you can always Google it. Um, the tax law of 2017, um, September, gave us so many wonderful things that people don't even realize it. And they don't even realize why they did it. They did it because. The government doesn't want to have uh, government housing anymore. They want you to invest, and they're going to make it really, really good for you to do that. And that's really changed since 2017. You can buy a, a vehicle, a motor vehicle, up to a million dollars. Put it in your, your uh, thing, you know, in your, your whatever. If it's, it, if it's a, uh, something for, say, you're a farmer or whatever, you can end you can take that off, depreciate it the first year. It's pretty cool, right? Those, that's what bonus depreciation is all about. But all of those things don't mean anything. What really means for you to do is to invest in a single family house, a duplex, whatever it is. Make it new because the cash flow, you're not going to live on the cash flow. You put 20% down. Not going to make a difference. But if it's new, in 10 years, it's only 10 years old. And it's built to today's code. And that's very important. So I'm going to go through uh, a little bit. Oops. This, this, now this is an interesting thing, which my friend Wagner here found through a friend of his. And this is new. Florida's economy has topped 
one trillion dollars, meaning if Florida was its own nation, it would be the 17th largest economy in the world. That's larger than Saudi Arabia, Switzerland, and Argentina. The Florida Chamber Foundation says the state is adding close to three billion dollars to Florida's gross domestic product each day. The chamber has launched a new initiative, Florida 2030, to address problem areas in the economy, including the achievement gap in schools and the poverty rate. So that's pretty interesting. The governor of New York is auditing people that say they're moving to Florida. <laughs> you have to be there, I think, 183 days. So you're getting ordered if you move from New York to Florida because people don't want to pay those high taxes anymore. So just think of that. And we have, a, Brock will tell you what's going on later on um, in Ponce Siena. But it's just kind of an amazing thing. So what we do for our investors is we identify the best prop properties with the highest yields, okay? So that would mean that if you were going to buy a house for $200,000, that he would be a million bucks, right? Um, we would put it in an area that we know it's going to appreciate. Florida probably has the highest appreciation in the nation now. I mean, you guys know what appreciation is all about. You've lived through it how many times here, you know? It doesn't stop. It might go like this, but it keeps going up. We uh, will give you the projection of the income. It's an investment, and nothing is guaranteed. But we try to give you very, very good information, what we believe. Um, we secure financing for you. We have got three or four people that we like. We arrange home inspections. We always ask you to have a home inspection, even if it's a brand new house, because we only sell new things. And I'm going to explain to you why we only sell new things. But we ask you to have a home inspection because who knows? Crawling around, that inspector might find something. Uh, we give you all the closing documents. You don't have to come there. I would say 99% of my people I've never met, and they've never come see their property. And every month I sell maybe five, six resales of people that have bought. They never even saw them. They never even been there. And they make a lot of money on this. And on Saturday, you're going to learn how to do a 1031 exchange. So you're not going to pay any taxes on that. And you can also buy out of your IRA, which is a very good thing to do. Um, so if you don't feel like you have you know, all this money, I'm going to buy something for 200000 I want 10 houses, $40,000, right? You can always buy out of your IRA. It's called a self-directed IRA. I'm sure you gentlemen are going to tell them about that on Saturday. So um, then we have a wonderful property manager who happens to be my son, <laughs> who we had to beg and beg and beg and beg back in 2008 to do property management because property managers make or break your whole relationship with an investment. You don't get along with them, it doesn't work. It makes it horrible. So you have to like your property manager and you have to be able to pick up a phone and have somebody to call. Tommy has about 1,200 houses. He has 32 employees. This is not a mom and pop deal. Okay, That's a little bit different than the lady that has 300 houses and she does it with her daughter. Big difference. Okay, so now that the whole thing went off. Okay. All right, so that's what we do with that. So I've been doing this since 1979. Okay. And um, I try to stay up with things. It's amazing what you can learn just by listening to my, I listen to the investors. Now, some of my investors have 150 houses. Some other ones have 10. Doesn't matter. Start and get started. I always tell people, if you're young, buy 10 houses today. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But over five years, that's not a lot. You buy 10 houses, 10, 15 years, you're going to sell half, pay them off, and you're done. You're retired. It's pretty easy, right? And if you buy new houses in 10 years, it's only 10 years old. This is what I keep saying this to people. You buy a 30-year old house in 10 years, it's 40 years old. Where we come from, we have millennials and we have baby boomers. Millennials never want to live in an old house. I couldn't <coughs> give my antiques away to my kids. They're like, eh, we don't like antiques. Okay, but, and, uh, and the baby boomers, when they come from their cold areas, 
they want just open, open houses, they want to see the outside, they want to be in their golf course, they want to have a good time. They don't want old either. Nobody wants to deal with old. So you buy a new house and in 10 years, 20 years, it's only 20 years old. That's really something. Now, um, we, we have, uh, I've been a realtor for a long time and I'm, I sell a lot. Now, sometimes we say I sell 150 houses, sometimes we say I sell 300 houses. This year we said we sell a house every day, correct? <laughs> and I was just told it's getting better than that, right? Yes. Because Florida is on fire. Why are we on fire? We are cheap and cheerful. <laughs> Our average house is $247,000, and that's a four bedroom, two bath with a pool, sometimes. So it's all, it, all, it all works out to your favor. And this is my partner. Hello, everyone. Tell them about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So good evening. Yeah. I, I'm very fortunate to be here. Thank you very much for inviting us. So I'm very blessed to work with Jane. She has a lot of experience. I come from the development side. So I've been in the development for about 18 years. I have done over $600 million worth of development. Uh, I work exclusively in some Central Florida areas, such as Palm Bay. We have Brock, which is building now uh, Poinciana for us. We're going to tell a little bit about that. But I come from condo, single family homes, hospitality, and I'll tell you, my preference is always single family homes. I love single family homes. They're easy to get away in case if you have any financial troubles or you want to you know, sell them. Uh, they do cash flow fantastic. They appreciate fantastic. So my passion out of being several different areas of real estate, being commercial, hospitality, condos, I found myself in single family homes. That's exactly what I buy. That's what I invest. And a lot of the areas that we developed, I keep houses for myself as well. So 2016, I semi-retired. My wife is here. Um, in about three months, she kicked me out of the house and says, are you going to have breakfast at 10 o'clock in the morning every day? And look at me, and I'm like, yeah, no, yes. I didn't know what to say. She said, no. The answer is no. So uh, I got back into real estate because that's all I have done. So I did not enjoy being retired. But what I can tell you is it's fun to be able to retire. Knowing you can is much better than retiring, at least for me. Uh, talking a little bit about what we have done is uh, we founded with Jane actually uh, a, a concept which is called the tenant proof housing. So every house that we build that it's new, we do tile floors and we're going to cover a lot of them in the presentation. Blinds, ceiling fans, granite countertops. So this is not your regular house that you come from a builder that it comes basic and then you have to pay for upgrades. And what does that do? That gives you a better tenant more rental income, better cash flow, and actually it's going to depreciate a lot less because you, your capex, which is the money that you have to save for every three or four years, once you get a new tenant, it's going to be much less. First you have a new house, second year I have to replace your Formica countertops because you're already granted. You have to replace your carpets or have them washed because you have tile floors. So all of that is going to make a difference on the long run of the house. And for Tommy as well, that is actually much better because Less maintenance means less cost for you guys, and a better and a happier tenant. Oh, they're easier to rent too because they're loaded with upgrades compared to the ones nearby that don't have the upgrades. But we'll talk about the product in a little bit. Yeah. So, so why put your money in Central Florida? That's what we're going to talk about a little bit. So I used to say a thousand people move to Central Florida every day. Well, it's gotten to be more than that right now. So it's kind of crazy. And we had 76 million people visit Central Florida last year. It's a lot of people. How are you going to have 80, well, they'll probably say 80 in, in 2019, 80 million people. Now, we say that there's 325 million people in the United States, right? That's like a quarter of us all covered in Florida. Only Central Florida. They come through the, uh, through we have so many uh, airports. We have international airport in Tampa, an international airport in Orlando, an international airport in Daytona, uh, Sanford, and uh, Melbourne. So those are the ones that we use. So uh, it's the number one place for millennials to move now. Why? Because it's cheap and cheerful. It's very, very cheap and cheerful. We do not have state income tax. And we don't want it. 
So anybody that wa that doesn't that, wa that wants it needs to go back to where they came from if they want it. We don't want state income tax. Um, we have four, uh, in Central Florida, there's 46 of the top um, 100 companies, Fortune 500 companies, are in Central Florida, and it's changing even more. We seem to have, be having Amazon distribution centers on every corner now. We have them. We have one in Daytona, we have one in Ponciana, we have all over Lakeland. It's a lot. And um, I learned from Prudential that Florida, Central Florida was the number one ma manufacturing area in the United States. Go figure, right? I didn't know that. Okay, so um, we have 275 days of sunshine, we have two deep water ports, Tampa and uh, uh, Port um, Canaveral, and Port Canaveral is soon to be the number one cruise port. Why? Disney. Disney has cruises. So Disney has really done a lot for us. Um, number one beach in the nation is Clearwater Beach. How many knew that? I, I didn't know that. But you go there and you'll see every European comes to Clearwater Beach. And it's really clear water. It's like being in the Bahamas. You can see your feet. Um, what else? Um, we have the largest university in the United States. I don't know if that's the world, but the United States, and that's the University of Central Florida. And um, it also is the number one school that produces people that are going to work in the space program. Space program is now what we call Space Coast. It's um, from <clears throat> Palm Bay to Cape Canaveral. Now that that's been taken over by uh, by regular people, and it's not owned, done by the government anymore. It's really, really, really taken off. So uh, we have no state income tax. We're a judicial state. It can take 10 years to foreclose on anybody. They can't just take your keys. Like in Georgia, it's 15 days. Here, you have, here you just, it's a non-recourse loan. You just take it back. Not in Florida. It has to go through all the courts. We're a homestead state, that means 100%. That's why O.J. Simpson moved to Florida. You can come to Florida, and you can buy a house for cash, $5 million, and nobody can ever take it away from you, as long as you pay your taxes in your HOA. You know what HOA is? It's like, they are like the policemen of the world. If you don't pay your HOA, they can take your house away. Um, more second homes in, in uh, Florida than any other place. Now there's more homes than anything else. The largest appreciation in the nation. The largest appreciation in the nation. And Forbes said by two, 2021, and this was back in uh, uh, 2017, that we would have 35% appreciation. And we probably are going past that. And, don't, and I always say don't forget your bonus depreciation. Because even if you're not a real estate uh, professional, when you buy um, a house and you put it into service, you can get what's called bonus depreciation. That's a whole other thing, and if you sign up, I'll send you a video on that. So here's what we do. We do uh, everything we do is new, okay? We build, as uh, Wagner said, tenant resilient homes. Um, cheap and cheerful in Florida. 4-2, average 225 on a quarter quarter of an acre. Okay, so as Wagner said, we're not D.R. Horton. D.R. Horton will buy, build on a 40 or 50 foot lot. Four houses to an acre. That's a big lot. Very, very nice. All sodded with trees, the whole deal. It's very nice. All houses are built to the newest codes. That's really important. So let's just get over this part, okay? A new house that we're building, the insurance is less than $600 a year with hurricane insurance. We go, really? And, and um, a $500 deductible. Why is it so inexpensive? The same a similar house that's 20 years old, your insurance is about $2,000 a year. Why? <coughs> you are built to code. That means, and I'll give you a good example. Of, was we doing a house? And I said to this uh, the builder, I said, I really want a, a door, but I would like it, you know, so you can see the light through it and everything. And I said, but I don't know how to do it because I want somebody to stick their hand in and just, you know, break the window and get in the house. He said, I want to see the guy that can put their hand through that window. 
because the windows now are up to 140 miles an hour that something hits it before it will break. So that's what it means to code. That the roofs are hip roofs, so the air goes underneath them. So insurance is less expensive. Also, they make you uh, compound the, you know, the, the ground down, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to explain that. And then they also, we also raise it up a bit. So there's a lot of things that why the insurance is so much less. Uh, the builder will give a 10-year, on a new house, a 10-year uh, warranty on the structure. Um, and um, all the appliances are bought, and all, all these fixtures are bought from Home Depot. Isn't that interesting? So, you know, a regular dishwasher or something, you get that year warranty, but you can go and get more warranties on it if you like. Okay? So everything is new and should last 15 to 20 years. Um, so our builders only built for us. And why do we have them, and why would they want to do that? They want to do it because they don't have to do any marketing, they don't have to have a model, they don't have to have a uh, sales force, they don't have to have people watching their sales force, and they don't have to worry about the color scheme. You don't get to choose that. They're all very upscale, clean houses, you know, grays and whites, whatever it is now, but because they don't have to do that, we reap the benefits. We probably reap about 20, 15, oh, we'll go through each one, but in Palm Bay, the houses are 215. On the open market, they'd probably be about 240, 245, okay? Um, so we'll, we'll be buying with equity. Our houses are complete, nothing else to add. So when you see the finishes, somebody said, you know, the finishes in Brock's houses are like finishes of in a three or four hundred thousand dollar house, which to you that would be a million and a half. So um, they're very, very nice finishes. Ceiling fans, you know, you go and you buy from a national builder and you have to get the blinds and you have to get the garage door opener and you have to get all this other stuff. This is all, this is all there. You don't have to do anything. Um, okay, so now I turn it off again. All right, so what's going on here? Florida continues to be the prime place where millennials go and baby boomers go. Now, you know, we used to say people retired at 60. People aren't retiring anymore. So we have the largest retirement community in the United States called the Villages. Average credit score in the Villages is 804. <laughs> right? And all these people ride around in little golf carts, and it says Sally and Joe on the back of their thing, and they ride around their golf carts. $40,000 golf cart. $40,000. Yeah. See, you see, and people go, what, what would they do there? Sell a golf cart, fix a golf cart, <laughs> mow their lawns, do their hair, go, uh, you know, have a restaurant. These people have money, and they're spending money, and they're having a great time. So around there, we're building something. We've sold some houses around there. It's Wildwood. And uh, Wagner is building a whole uh, community out there. But the people that service these 300,000 people don't have any place to live because they're not 55. It's a 55 and over community. Okay? So we're building places for them to live and nice houses to rent. And then we have um, the space go. And that, so that's really the baby. That's the baby boomers. The baby boomers are all over now. And when they come to Florida, if they've come from a cold area, they don't know where they're going to live. So they rent for a year or two. And then some of them never, ever stop renting. It's pretty easy. Pay $1,800. I don't have to worry about anything. That's pretty easy for somebody that, you know, they've had big mortgages or they just don't want to be bothered. And they don't pay all those taxes anymore. Okay, so then we have Space Coast. Space Coast. This goes is like something out of, you know, just all of a sudden happened. It was happening back in 2017. It really started in 2015. But <clears throat> over 400 new companies are in Space Coast. And you know you hear all about it all this time. You have it out here too. But the only place that you can put a man <coughs> in space in the United States is Cape Canaveral. Isn't that interesting? I don't know. It's a little bit beyond me, but that's what it's all about. So um, Palm Bay is a community, it's the bedroom community for Space Coast. So uh, it's about, or in the Northwest area, it's about, I don't know, 
five minutes to uh, the airport. That's where SpaceX is. So it's very, very convenient. And there's five, five, well, one, two, yeah, at least five international um, air airports within an hour, an hour and 10 minutes to Orlando. So um, <clears throat> we also have, uh, okay, so I wanted to talk about, and I don't even know what we have. I wanted to talk about, there's two corridors. There's a corridor called I-95. So that goes from Miami to um, Maine, and that's where Space Coast is, okay? That's the I-95 East Coast. Then we have from Daytona to Tampa. Daytona, Deltona, or Lake Mary, uh, Orlando. And nobody lives in Orlando, believe me. And then, because Orlando's huge, but downtown city, nobody lives there. Some kids, I suppose, the millennials go there, right? And then all the way through to Disney. Disney's not in Orlando. Disney's in Kissimmee, Kissimmee, Ponciana. Uh, Fort Wilderness is in Ponciana. And then we go all the way over to um, Lakeland and then Tampa. It's just one big corridor. And so that whole corridor is being called Tampa, Orlando. And they're going to have to think of something else because it's already going to the East Coast. It's going to be the largest uh, metropolitan area on the East Coast, and that's pretty cool. So here we go. This is Palm Bay, and I'm going to I'm going to let um, Wagner take Palm Bay up. But as you can see, if you look, go to niche.com, n-i-c-h-e.com, put your own address in, and you'll see what they say about your where you live, and you'll be really surprised. Thank you, Jane. So let's talk a little about Palm Bay. As Jeannie very well said, the, what we call the Space Coast is a stretch of land which is right on I-95. Uh, I-95 is right on the East Coast, on the Atlantic, and what you're going to see is what has happened in Palm Bay is amazing. And before we start talking about Palm Bay, I watched this movie on the plane going to Los Angeles. It's called Apollo 11. <laughs> and July 20th of 1969 is when Neil Armstrong, step foot in the moon. And that's probably the last greatest thing that happened to Palm Bay until in the past five to seven, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the houses in Palm Bay were built in a half an acre. Because at that time, NASA was really doing really well, you know, we really wanted to put a man on the moon. But right after that, what we have to realize is a lot of the places where you have a lot of companies that are defense companies or work with the government, you have a very big driver, which is a lot of jobs, a lot of money, but that can be cut. Right? I mean, what happened if during the administration, the Obama administration, NASA had big budget cuts, and that really affected that area. So Melbourne, which is a city which is neighboring from Palm Bay, what they did is, as soon as the, the economy started to downturn in 2006, 2007, eight, they said, okay, if you have a tech company, and you want to move here and bring all of your employees, we'll pay your rent for up to two years. And what happened is all that stretch of land from Palm Bay to Titusville, Cocoa Beach, Port Canaveral, it just started booming. So we have some very good Californians that went there. So Elon Musk is there, uh, Richard Benson, which is British, he's not Californian, and we have um, Jeff Bezos. So they have SpaceX, and that's just a little bit of what's happening in that area. So this is a website, as Jim very well said, it's called niche.com, it's free, you guys can go online, and you can put your address, and that's going to tell you what that area is. For example, Palm Bay, it's an A- minus area. I had clients from California that flew to Florida, and they put their addresses, and it's not an A-, minus. it's a little bit worse. <laughs> Maybe because the house, the, the price of the housing is too high, so that's not a very desirable area. Another very important thing about Palm Bay, if you look at it, it's number nine best city to buy a house in America. So you're not going to the boonies to buy a house expecting that it's going to rent. The highest demand we have had is for contract workers that come to work for a lot of the tech companies that have a three or four year contract and they want to buy and build uh, or, or buy, uh, sorry, to rent them and live in the house. So niche.com, you can check your neighborhood or you can actually take a look at your area you're buying. Talk a little about what's happening right there. We talk about some of all those great brands and great guys. So we have everything from Boeing, uh, Blue Origin. Uh, up until 2025, they have, Google has announced that close to 80% of all the internet in the US is gonna be driven by satellites. So 
When you talk about the space programs, well, we will be sending a lot of tourists to the moon or to outer space, and NASA is doing more lunches in the past five years than what it has already done in the past 50. But that's not only it. One of the companies that Gene actually introduced me to, which is called uh, Rocket Crafters, they're building uh, a solid fuel system for rockets. And it's a non-combustive uh, fuel system, so it's not going to be explosive. What are they doing? They're setting up a whole bunch of rockets that can send satellites up to space. Buying a satellite now, you can probably buy it for $30,000, $32,000 a starting price, but it'll cost you two and a half million bucks to get them up there in three years. <laughs> so that's not going to work, right? So more demand for satellites, things being sent into space, and that's what is happening in this whole area here. But from Boeing, uh, Blue Origin, SpaceX, I mean, you, you name it, Lockheed Martin, uh, Harris and L3 Corporation that just merged in July of this year, they're going to be generating 30,000 jobs and $41 billion a year in revenue. So when you talk about companies like this, it's really, hello, welcome. And we're going to talk a little bit about the houses. So as we had said, a lot of the houses that we build are four bedrooms, two bath. They're between 16 and 1,700 square feet. We really look at the finishes and are very proud of it. So we use tile floors, uh, electronic garage door openings, which are, are Wi-Fi ready. So from California, you can open up your garage door if you wish. Uh, ceiling fans, high ceilings, wood cabinets, granite countertops, uh, so on and so forth. So for a four two, retail, as Gene has said, is probably about two forty right now. We're putting the retail is two thirty five. You're going to be buying this house for two fifteen. And why? Gene very well said it. I don't have to have a model house. I don't have to have a salesperson there full time. I don't have to have 10 different models with 10 different paints with a whole bunch of different upgrades. The way we build it is the best way for the tenants that you're looking for. So when you look at both cash flow, the rent range in Palm Bay is between $1,750 and $1,900 right now. The loan amounts, if you put 25% down, uh, is probably your monthly payment is going to be about 885 for the principal and interest. Property tax is 281 Insurance is almost free, $50 per month. Uh, Gene very well said. One of the smartest men in, the, in this country, is, in my opinion, is called Warren Buffett, and he owns Geico Insurance. And everybody asks, Wagner, what about the hurricane? And, and what about the insurance? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, get an insurance code. If it's low enough that justifies, it means it's a very low probability of something bad happening in that area. Because insurance companies hardly ever lose. Um, we have no HOA. All the lots that we build in Palm Bay are spot lots. What does that mean? Those half an acre lots that had one house, now we're subdividing and buying them another quarter of an acre. So we're really repopulating the whole city. So you may have a street that is very well maintained, but you may, own, you may be the lucky guy that has a new house in the middle of the, that street. Not their old, no, uh, uh, that house, they're just older. Houses building in the 60s and 70s. So new houses are just filling in the city. We had about six or seven months worth of uh, getting permits in place. The city was very resilient on getting everything to grow and to develop in Palm Bay. But thanks to a lot of the companies that we have uh, started to partner up with, which is you know, demanding those houses to be built, the city is much more flexible. And now we have a master plan for both city and development. So Palm Bay houses are 215. We have Southeast and Northwest that we build. This is not in the community. This is spot lots all over the city. Cash flow is here. We can share a copy of the presentation for you guys. So, positive cash flow every month. If it, it's rents for seventeen fifty, it's three ninety four. If it rents for nineteen hundred, it's five forty four. And if you buy this cash, you have no financing. It's twelve seventy nine uh, per month if you rent for seventeen fifty, or fourteen twenty nine if you rent for nineteen hundred. And we're gonna move on, and we're gonna have more uh, materials for you guys a little bit. So. I think this is the I-4 Deltona Corridor. We just purchased 56 acres of land in this area. There's a brand new Amazon distribution center heading there. This is probably as far between 35 minutes from downtown Orlando that you would live and work in Orlando. So this area is just amazingly growing. Uh, Halifax has a brand new hospital there, which is generating an amazing amount of demand. Amazon Distribution Center just announced in October of this year. It's when we got into a contract for that piece of land. And we have a lot of new, brand new retail coming up. We have a five-star movie theater, 
This is an old development area that has been developed since before the Depression, and now it's really coming back strong. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we're going to do there. So we're going to be doing a lot of the quads, which are in opportunity zones. I would never find an opportunity zone and see what you very well said because it is an opportunity zone. It has to cash flow, it has to have appreciation, and it has to be a good property to start with. So the quads, we're going to have two twos and three twos. Uh, this is actually going to give you a overall overall uh, cash purchase for about seven hundred twenty thousand. If you never had a, you know been an investor and have been in a very well developed area, single family home is for you. But I want to touch a little bit on the quads. So if you do a twenty five percent down on this, which is one hundred eighty thousand, principal and interest per month is twenty eight eighty uh, twenty eight ninety nine. Property taxes are thirteen seventy five. Insurance two hundred five. HOA is $50, even though those are quads, we're going to have a, a very little area with a swimming pool and everything for the community. Um, management fee is about $452. Your total cost is going to be $49.81. And your cash flow on this property is $669. So, with 25% with 25 down. Uh, if you buy a cash, it's going to actually match about 50, 50, 55 60 gross. After all the costs, it's going to match you about uh, 35 60 I'm going to call my friend Brock to talk a little about Poinciana, which is his back of the woods. And uh, thank you. I'll be back with you shortly. Thank you, Wagner. Hello, everybody. So, uh, Poinciana is my neck of the woods. I actually am a Poinciana resident now, okay? Um, it's a great growing community. We actually, I noticed there's a slide that's left off, but it's actually in the middle, right on the line of Osceola and Polk County. Both rapidly growing counties. And Osceola um, is actually the fifth largest growing, fastest growing county in the whole, whole nation. Um, we've, got, we've got a lot of new, new things coming in this area right now. So we're, we've got a brand new Amazon distribution center that was announced last week. That's going to bring a million square foot warehouse and uh, over a thousand new jobs that are paying over the average right now. Walt Disney World, that's where I've noticed um, probably 20% of our tenants have come from their Disney employees. Disney houses 55,000 employees uh, in Central Florida. Public, public supermarket, they have their headquarters, that's our number one supermarket down in Florida. Um, their headquarters, they were actually founded right here in Polk County, so we have, that's uh, going to be another part of the tenant base along with Florida's natural. I'm sure you all have had some of that orange juice. Their citrus fields and their farms are in Polk County as well. There's a brand new university, um, Florida Polytechnic University. I'm still learning about all of that, but Gene's, Gene's the one to turn me on to this place. It looks great. We have a full self-driving car uh, system and set up that they're, they're working on everything they're on phase two of that and it's bringing a lot of desirable uh, a lot of it's desiring a lot of education a lot of high education there so lakeland and winter haven is also in polk county that's going to be like the main cities of the county and that is actually the number nine fastest growing msa in the entire country new core steel another great plant 240 million dollar warehouse facility that's going to bring in jobs of the average average pay of sixty-six thousand dollars per employee, which is huge. I mean, you see the median household income; it's higher than that, and that's that's per job. Uh, Two hundred and forty million dollar plan. Polk State College is another thing, another university we have there. And this is just going over a little bit. You can see up here. Uh, all these quotes from from different different places or different people here. Uh, this is all recent. Within the last 18 months alone, uh, 450 million dollars in new capital investment just in Polk County. That doesn't include Osceola County, and 2,400 new jobs. And these are high-paying jobs. So I have a few products that I'm going to be showing you guys. This is the single-family houses. Uh, Right now, lately this last year, we've, we've been doing one plan. We've kept it simple, and we spent a lot of time, a lot more than normal than you would uh, on a 1,600 square foot floor plan. 
We made sure that we could fit four bedrooms in there, but it doesn't feel small. It's really nice and open, modern layout. It looks, uh, it feels as open as it looks nice, okay? Uh, we have nine foot four ceilings. That's a foot four inches taller than the standard. Everywhere else you'll see eight foot ceilings. Wagner's, their group's doing nine foot four. So, I mean, we make our stuff look good, feel good, and that's what, that's what brings the tenants in there quicker. You'll see all of our finishes, all the tile floors, we keep it consistent, the tenant resiliency, and we, we, don't, we don't try to cheap out on this type of thing. We want a happy tenant and a happy investor. We want longer leases. We want it to lease for more money as, as time goes on. So there's no remodeling that needs to be done here in 10 years. You're ahead of the curve with gray walls and gray tile and modern tile in the, in the bathrooms, quartz countertops, the whole nine yards. They're all concrete block construction. We don't build wood. We've been approached by people wanting wood. Uh, it's going to get you higher cash flow at the beginning, but um, anything that I build is something that I'm going to keep or I would keep if, uh, if I needed to or I already am keeping some of these. So I build all concrete block, low maintenance and better appreciation. And the people there actually care about concrete block. So you'll see the numbers here, 20% down, you're going to put uh, oh, about 50 grand you would be putting down. Uh, principal and interest going to be around 923, property taxes 208, insurance like Wagner said basically free, okay, mm -hmm. management fee, Tommy's 8%, and your total outgo is going to be around $1,300 a month. Uh, the rent range goes from around $1,550 to $1,750, I actually leased back one of the properties that I built. Um, in a peak season this year, and, and to use it as an office as we're getting started in the area. And I've rented it back for sixteen seventy five, I believe. So it does range it doesn't, in different times of the year. But Tommy will tell you more over that. Um, my house is here. I can get two twenty five to two thirty all day long retail. I would rather deal with you guys and investors. Uh, much easier to deal with. Um, I don't let anybody pick their colors or anything. I think I do a pretty good job with that myself. And I don't <laughs> want the, uh, the headache and the hassle of, uh, oh, you wanted this room blue and this one green. I'd much rather just make less, be more streamlined, deal with professionals, and, uh, and give you guys the product at a great discount. So you'll see more photos here of the finishes. Some of these are, were on the last slide, but they're a little bit larger now. Every, every uh, floor plan that I do, it doesn't matter if it's a single family house, a duplex, a townhouse, I'm going to put in an LED tray in, in, the, uh, in the bedroom and the duplex, I've got them in the bedroom and the living room, which is going to look good. It's a nice little wow factor. It really doesn't cost me a ton, okay, that's a secret, don't tell anybody that. But it kind of lets people remember it and it's, it's, you know, nobody else has this, okay, even the, the people that are paying the $230, they are not they don't have these type of finishes. So, you guys are actually the first ones to see this. Um, these are my townhouses in Osceola County side. Very modern looking. Uh, they, each building we've got is seven units per building. We've actually got five different buildings we're doing. Um, this one shows three, the other two are across the street. And I wanted to try to make them feel like as much of a community as possible, even though they are uh, not all on the same side of the street. So we're all going to, you'll see similar uh, outside finishes. Now I might change it up a little bit, have a gray building and then the brown wood on one. But all the finishes on the inside, I haven't built any of these yet, so there's not any interior photos, but you can expect these same type of finishes on the inside. You will expect those. It'll be the same. We can do the same lighting package, the same cabinets, the same countertops, the same tile, all that stuff. So just going back and checking those out. Um, so these are these are going to be a, a lot less a lot less expensive entry price. So one eighty nine, so under two hundred thousand. And when you're out in California, I know you're thinking, where the hell can you find anything under two hundred thousand uh, in Florida? But not for long. Okay. So retail, I can get two ten for these all day long. That's one hundred fifty a foot. That's probably on the low end. There's other townhouse builders in the area that are getting one fifty five, one sixty a foot. Um, I think. These numbers, y'all, we don't really price them on a price per square foot because we're not selling retail. Um, but these are going to rent, and I feel I feel like I'm pretty conservative on this. 1350 to 1450. There's a there's apartments across the street 
uh, and they got formica tops and vinyl roll down floors and carpet and all that and 300 square foot or less and they're getting 1350 to 1495 during the, the right time of the year. So all the models are, are three bedroom, two and a half bath, 1409 square feet. That's going to be the interior units. The outside units, which are actually the same price, probably only on the first building or two. Uh, but the outside units are actually 1,500 square feet, okay? And they, you can tell they've got more windows, so it brings in extra light. They're a little bit larger to, to kind of give the outside more dimension. You'll see the, the backs here. So the master bedrooms are a little bit larger. But anyway, those are the townhouses. The third product that I've got is the uh, duplexes. So this is a, uh, you'll see our prices, we start at 360 on the duplexes. That is on the Polk County side. So Osceola is growing, both Polk and Osceola are growing at rapid paces. Osceola really wasn't as prepared for it as much. So they're, they have to charge a little bit more on the impact piece, but that is, uh, I'm, I'm eating a lot of that, but at the same time, that brings in new schools, new fire departments, new police departments. Everything that uh, is in the recipe for appreciation, which is great, okay? So we kept the same type of style on the outside. These are one stories and they're really gonna look great. Like the outsides here, we've got some uh, metal awnings over the windows and really nice landscaping that really set it off. Soffit lights and just a really modern design on the, the roof lines and, and all the finishes. Once again, you'll say we, we keep it pretty uniform and, and uh, standard, even though it's a pretty high standard. So these babies will rent for around thirteen fifty to fifteen hundred a month. I've had depending on time. They're three bedroom, two bath. Every property we build, even the townhouses, and then the single families. Everything we put porches on our front doors, around our front doors and our back doors, so all the exterior doors are covered. And over time, that that kind of means something because you can't help the weather. So once our warranties run out, it's good to take every precautionary measure you can to make sure that you have as little to no capex expenditures. So we try to do that to help out. So even on the, the small ones, you'll see covered, covered, covered. Everywhere's covered, okay? Plus the tenants like that. You're in Florida, great climate. They want to enjoy the outside. So you'll see, you see the numbers here, and I know that Gene Wagner will, will be sending you the presentation so you can go into more detail. So these will bring in around 500 as much as $800 in cash flow after all expenses. And So uh, we don't usually do turnkey properties, and probably this is the last time you're going to see them with us because uh, we have some few left that are actually we're done. Uh, we used to buy, I did over 400 uh, turnkey properties, and people call them flips, remodels, whatever you want to call them, right? So, there was a time in Florida that we bought a lot of properties from banks, and we did have mortgages enough to do them great. They do cash flow very nicely. They do appreciate, but if you like a turnkey property, buy it. I'm not saying don't buy it, but I'd rather buy a new sandwich on the phone. So this is probably the last ones in the inventory that we have, and then we probably only get into single family homes just because there's not enough money to be spent want a turnkey property. And this is really a little box of surprises. So sometimes what you see on the outside and the inside, you may have to change the whole electrical system on a house, a brand new roof, DOAC, and then we're losing money to sell a, a very good, well done property. Because we can put a little bit of lipstick on this and make it look good and sell it over to you. And then you're gonna spend, the, your capex is gonna be huge. You're gonna have a lot of things to fix. So all of the houses that we sell has brand new roofs, brand new ACs, tile floors throughout the house. I'm not sure it's all the pictures. Anyways, turnkey properties, great investment. If you're looking for a little bit more cash flow, less initial investment as far as the price of the property, you will expect to have an older home. So you will have to probably do a little bit more repairs. So every two or three years, something is going to break. <laughs> Being very honest with you guys, you know it's going to happen. So this one is actually in Daytona Beach. It's a two one. Uh, as you can see uh, here, we're missing the appliances, but always the appliances are stainless steel. We always use stainless steel appliances. We have vinyl floors, waterproof vinyl floors on this property. This property is a two one. It's only a 900 square feet property, but this is about four blocks from the ocean. It's right, it's right close to the ocean. Properties are very similar to this, and you can go on Zillow and take a look at them. We're selling for two, 225. Okay? 
Uh, we expect to rent not in the winter time, not in the winter time. On the winter time, actually, we just did a comp for for a client, and it's probably getting about a, a eleven hundred to eleven fifty. Summertime, we're going to be looking at this. As soon as it warms up a little, between thirteen fifty to fifteen hundred. Um, your cost for this property is about one eighty four. If you do twenty five percent down, five percent fixed for thirty years, it gives you a loan amount of one thirty eight. Principal and interest seven forty one. Property taxes are two twenty. Insurance is about eighty dollars. You notice it's about thirty dollars more on a two one than on a brand new property found there. So as Jean has said, once you build a new property that it is up to the building code, uh, it usually insurance is going to go down. And by the way, Florida has one of the most strict building codes in the country. So you're going to get a lot of property for that. Management fee, 8%. Uh, Tommy charges that for all the networks. So if you come from a network, you're going to get a discount. We're going to talk about that. Total payments is 1137 If you use the lowest number, which I always tell people, don't go to the highest number. Try to be conservative. So your positive cash flow on this house is 213 If you pay cash for this property, after all the expenses, you're going to have a positive cash flow of 954 and you know, on the on the best case scenario, fifteen hundred dollars a month, eleven zero four, which is a really pretty good you know cash flow on an existing property. Uh, this one is in Leesburg, so the village has just purchased another eight thousand acres in Leesburg, and the village is, if you recall, it's the fifty-five and over community. So this place here is just exploding. Uh, Leesburg is just going nuts. Great property as well. As you can see, this is a 2-1. It has granite countertops, glass tile backsplashes, stainless steel appliances, tile throughout the house. And this house is only for 125 or something. For 125, it's a 2-1. Yeah, don't, I'm not gonna sell it to you. Okay, I'm gonna have more investment here. So actually, this house, it's 125. If you put 25% down, 5% five, five, um, 5 fixed in 30 years, Loan amount is 93750 Principal and interest on this property is 503 Property tax is 154 Insurance is $40. By the way, all the houses that we're showing it to you is concrete block. We're not much selling any wood frame houses, okay? Management fee, $96. Cost of ownership <coughs> is $793 per month. If we rent this house for $1,100, which is super conservative, you have a positive cash flow for $307. Best case scenario, $1,300, $507 on cash flow on this property. If you buy it cash, $810 and $1,010. So as you can see, the properties that are, are, are turnkey, you're going to buy it for less than what a new property would cost. But then again, you've got to figure it out. You <coughs> to do more so how much will it get for the last property? This one? Yeah. Uh, uh, what was your question? Oh, how much will it rent for in the winter season? Uh, this is not a very seasonal area. Mm -hmm. This is not going to have the same impacts as Daytona, for example, because Daytona is a city that is really a coastal city. Mm -hmm. See, so, there's not a lot of big drivers on the hospital stores, and so those houses are more desirable in the summertime. We don't have a lot of people coming to Florida in December, January to the beach and says, "I want to rent a house." So, you know, we give you the we give you the reality. Because that's what you should expect. So Daytona, it's a much more seasonal. The rents are going to be a little bit lower. Uh, Palm Bay, uh, uh, Leesburg, Poinciana, they're, they, they're, they're very stable markets. But for example, if I tell you that it's a good month to rent in December or January, I'm going to be lying to you because nobody, who wants to move right before Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to rent in December. So those are slow months for us. But you start going into March, June, July, and Tommy's going to talk a little bit about that. So, Every rental market has a little bit of seasonality as well. Yeah. Not as much seasonality as we have in Daytona for this one. The point I want to make here, if you're going to put 15, 20, or 25 percent down on the house, you are not buying this house for cash flow. Is $300 or $500 a month for a working person going to change your life? not going to change your life. What's going to change your life is to buy something today that appreciates and tomorrow or 10 years from now you've made money on. That's what you're buying these houses for. And that's why Wagner says, you buy a new house, 
If it says you make $200 a month, you'll make $200 a month because the refrigerator is new, the roof is new, the water heater is new, everything is new. You're not buying or investing in a house here for that purpose of having cash flow. It will not change your life. And in fact, quite honestly, you have to pay taxes on that, right? So a lot of people say, oh, I don't care about that so much. All I'm looking for is what's going to happen. So you choose a market that you know is going somewhere and people are moving to. Now, one thing I wanted to say is, you know, when, when we say that, for example, in Ponciana, all these areas are um, within, you know, 20 miles, 25 miles. We can really go 25 miles in a half an hour. It's not the Bay Area. We really, we have the best road system probably in the United States because Disney made us have that. Very expensive. You know, every time you go there, you pay a 50, doll, 50 cent toll or a dollar toll. When he was in college, they would call me and say, you know, Mom, I got to pay all these tolls. I said, well, you're lucky you got a car. Take I-4, right? Because you didn't have to pay toll. But we have a really good road system. But you're not buying real estate in today's economy for cash flow. You're buying it because you're going to get a mortgage at 4.5% for 30 years fixed. Do you know what's going to happen to people, you know, I, and probably you don't know that this, people do this, but you could buy a house with me subject to my mortgage. Subject to. We did it all day long for years. So, Webner has a house that he's bought, and he has a 30-year fixed mortgage. And after 10 years, he wants to sell it to me. And I say to him, I'll buy it from you. But well, I want your mortgage too, and I'll even pay you five thousand, ten thousand dollars extra, because I'm going to buy it subject to his mortgage. Let me just tell you something: that bank doesn't care if the check says it's from Mickey Mouse. All they want is their payment every month. So there's a lot of things you're going to find out as you get into this that in the future these mortgages are worth a bazillion bucks. I've been around a long time, and a couple of people in this room probably have been there too, right? And we never saw a mortgage under 7%, ever, 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 until 2007, 8, whatever, they did whatever they did, right? So if you can get your hands on these mortgages, you just get them, and you don't care. I have a, a I know somebody, he owns probably 150, 200 houses. The first house he bought, he said, I wanted to buy it. I just wanted to buy it. I needed to start, start, right? This was like 30 years ago. And he said, I remember the day the house cash flowed. <laughs> took, a, took a year or two, three years, and every month he was putting $200 and $200. You don't have to do that now because you're going to get a great 30-year fixed mortgage. If this changes, if our mortgages change, and you pay 7%, just think of money. 4.5%, that's pretty cheap, right? Correct? Oh, yeah. You got that? Yes. Now you, now you change it to 7%, right? It's kind of like uh, when I went shopping I, uh, uh, last week, we were in New Orleans, right? And the lady said, 9.5% to buy something. Well, sure, 9.5% taxes. I said, okay, send it to Florida. Florida, it's 6%. A little bit different. That 3% makes a big difference. So when you have, can get these mortgages, and you should really think about that. Get them now, and you will come out at the end really, really, um, you know, on the top. So um, one of the things that, that I really, really wanted to, everybody to understand that we are not um, here we're only here just to tell you what can happen in the future, what we think is going to happen. And in Florida, you know, I, I, I don't know if you heard me at the beginning, the governor of New York is auditing anybody that says they're moving to Florida. Well, of course, we know how many people have moved to Florida. You just have to watch the news. You know, the newscaster moves from Long Island to 
you know, what did he say, Palm Bay or, no, uh, Palm, I don't know where he went to. But every day they're saying, I'm getting out of there, getting out of there, 13% taxes, state taxes in New York, right? And then they have high other taxes. So there's reasons. And plus, we have an average temperature of 75. It's cold when we left today, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and in fact, I have two, uh, two um, um, fireplaces in my house. When I tell people that, they go, what? Fireplaces? Yes. And all these houses come with heat and air conditioning. Heat and air conditioning you can have either one, you know? We don't usually turn heat on very often, but you have to have it. Um, I'm trying to think of it. You know, uh, they have um, this thing on TV that says, uh, on a tank full, all the places you can go on one tank of gas. Well, it's pretty good when you, because we don't have this, this stop and start, stop and stop. You get on that highway and you just go, you fly, except on I-4. I-4 is not so good. But, um, it's a great place. You need to come there. And I know what, lately a lot of people are coming. But um, I, I went through years selling people houses I never saw. And I'm now reselling those people's houses. And I still haven't seen them. But they've done really well. And I think that people like Richard can help you. Pe people uh, like Mike can help you with all those tax things and 1031 exchanges and everything. But don't worry. Get started if you haven't started yet. And if you have started, keep going if you can do it. But you have to have the right property manager. And Tommy's going to talk about his property manager. Gene, yeah. just, just yeah. a, little, a little thing which is, which is so important what Gene said about those interest rates. I'm just going to talk a little bit more about that. So we have a lot of my smart people here. How many countries we have in the world? I mean, we have a lot of nationalities here. About 192 countries, minus plus, 192. How many countries in the world has a 30-year fixed interest rate? Any guess? One. <laughs> Come on. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 right? Yeah. 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 Only the U.S. has a 30-year fixed interest rate. I mean, this is really the American dream. So owning a house is an American dream. Why people rent? Because they don't have credit. They don't have the down payment. Or the millennials, they don't want to stay in a place for too long. And they always want a new house. So take advantage of this. Funny story is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they back a lot of those loans, especially the 30 year fix for investment. And there's a little guy that says, I want 74,000 loans with a 30 year fix. Mm -hmm. And his name is Mr. Warren Buffett. And he says, nope, every American can only have 10, even if you are Warren Buffett. So at the end of the day, this is a way that the government created to incentivize investors like us, like me, like Jane, like you guys, to own property so we can actually solve an issue that they cannot solve, which is entry-level homes. People need to rent. They need to live. The government is not going to build any houses for rent. We will, and they'll help us do it through low interest rate mortgages backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Anyhow, as Jean was saying, we try to make this process streamlined and very simple for you. So we will introduce you to mortgage brokers, we'll introduce you to property managers, Tommy's going to talk to you. It's the key. If you have a great property manager, the, the percentage of your success increasing is tremendous because a bad property manager can kill you and a great property manager can really make or break you. Anyhow, identifying the best properties is number one. Buying is key. You've got to buy it right so you can build equity, appreciation, and cash flow. If you buy a very expensive property, it's just not going to cash flow. Your appreciation in certain areas are not going to happen. You're going to deal with a lot of tenants that are Section 8. I'm not saying all of them are bad, but you know, you got to watch where you buy. So buying is key, identifying the properties. Arrange a home inspection. It's $300 to $350 for a home inspector. I don't care if your house is new, it's an old, it's a turnkey property. If there's an issue, the builder, the, the seller, is going to be able to fix it for you. And I'm going to answer some questions uh, very shortly. I'm sorry. So basically, what do we do? Home insurance, home re uh, estimates for insurances. We do have the best prices. We usually introduce it to more than one company. You guys can shop around. Uh, make sure you have the best option. We help you secure the financing. It's very important that you get the best. We usually work with, as Gene said, three. We wanted to make sure you shop around. When they fight, you guys get the best deal, and that's what we want. We're, we want to help you guess, get the best deal. All the documents for the closing company, we work hand in hand. You don't have to go to Florida to sign your documents. 
Everything initially can be done online. You can actually sign and buy a house pretty much online. You can reserve it in our website just like Amazon online and we send you a contract. It's that simple. Um, independent managers, uh, they will make your market reports. They know what's happening. They have thermometers on the market. They have several houses within that area. They know who the companies that are renting, what kind of a tenant, what, you know, how to qualify those tenants. If they had an eviction in the past five or six years, that's very important for you guys to know that that's, they'll handle it. And without further ado, Mr. Tommy. I want to say one thing that you really have to keep in mind also. If you're a husband and wife or partners, you never get a mortgage in two people's name. Wife can have 10 mortgages, husband can have 10 mortgages. If you do it together, one is 20 and one is 10, okay? Plus, if something ever happened and you're together on that mortgage, both credits go bad. So keep them separate. You can be on the deed as a couple, mm -hmm. but when you're financing or you can put it under an LLC or however you decide to purchase on a trust, but under that note, under that mortgage, only do it under one name. It doesn't mean you cannot be on the, on the, on the deed together, but the <coughs> mortgage don't put both. That's, that's great. Tommy. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Gene's son. Um, so I started the property management, like she mentioned, um, about 2008, um, with feedback from people like Seawing, um, from uh, feedback from the investors with the common problems that they're having from their previous property managers, uh, poor uh, communication that they were having. Uh, poor transparency, charging for things that they weren't aware of. These are all the common things that you've probably heard from property managers that were happening to them all the time. So I said, okay, so these are things I have to do in order to be a good property manager. It seemed like a very easy thing to do. I just have to be honest, be transparent, not charge for things without them knowing about it. It seemed like a very easy thing to do. So that's basically how I built the property management company was um, being very transparent, um, didn't charge for things without them knowing about took pictures of all the repairs, um, and started off very simply that way. So uh, started off very quickly, went from zero properties to 100 properties within the first year. Very exciting, it was just me. I'm running around doing everything, like a crazy person. Um, and then started getting very serious at that point, I started hiring people. I got to about 225 properties, had a few staff, and I got stuck. I didn't really have the systems in place at that point. I kind of didn't know what to do, I didn't really have the the business background to say, okay, how am I going to organize this? I, you know, I didn't really know what to do at that point. So my long-term friend Ben, he worked for Siemens and NASA. He, uh, his, his job at that place was putting systems in place for big business. So after having a bunch of drinks and dinner with him, he said, man, I can build a, a software on the back end for you that uh, can help eliminate those mistakes because it seems like you need to have um, some, some back-end software to for your staff to be able to see what's going on to organize you. So I said, okay, let's start doing that. And after a few more drinks and some more food, um, <laughs> he said, why don't I buy half your company and I'll do it with you. So I said, okay, so let's do that. So now we're, uh, let's see now that's, he's been with me now for almost 10 years now. So now we're almost, almost over 1,100 properties. Uh, we have our own customized software that we've built. Um, so what we do that's a little different than every other country, uh, um, company in the country basically is most companies have uh, you have a property manager and they have 250 properties that that person manages and they have to do the leasing the maintenance the marketing and that person has a couple hundred properties that they do that doesn't work that person there's no way that person can know what they're doing at all the time they're doing a piece of paper and pencil there's no way that they can do that it doesn't work on a consistent basis there's no way they can do that consistently so what we've done is we have this software that we've built that we have a leasing team, we have a marketing team, we have a maintenance team, and we have um, uh, drivers and a few other back-end people. So we have 30 staff for 1,100 properties that we continually grow every day. And those people all are part of this software that we have. And it's all connected. So even though you as a client will have a person that's your property manager, your person you talk to, that person is also talking to all these people that are connected to the software all the time in the back-end. So, Everyone's connected throughout the process all the time. So everyone knows what's going on all the time. 
but that person doesn't have to be an expert at everything. So we have a leasing team that's always marketing your property. They're all experts at leasing. So they know the rents in there. We have a maintenance team who is speaking to the vendors to make sure they're not ripping us off, and they're making sure that everything is priced correctly. We have a, a marketing team that's making sure everything. So it's much more organized. It's, it's reduced the mistakes to zero. Um, it's allowed us to keep customer service much more organized. Uh, it's allowed us to be the most reviewed and uh, best company in Orlando for multiple years in a row. We're the, um, the uh, best place to work for in Orlando the last three uh, years in a row. We're the uh, fastest growing company in Orlando according to the Orlando Business Journal for the last three years in a row. We have a lot of rewards just from the software. So it's been a great thing for us. Um, it's allowed us to be very unique, but it's allowed us to maintain a level of service that most companies aren't able to do when, as we're growing. Uh, we're one of the largest companies in Orlando because of it. Um, so we're very unique in, as, as far as that goes. Uh, so at the end of this, if, I know you're going to have some, obviously some questions about property management that I'm not going to cover here that I'm sure you're going to have. One of the biggest questions that I always get is hurricanes, and they kind of covered a lot of that today, so we don't need to cover that. But um, it's not an issue for us. Um, um, we don't even board our windows, so don't be, it's not something we really worry about too much in our area. Um, the other thing I did want to mention, though, is um, the other thing that comes up all the time, I just lost my train of thought, was, um, sorry. Um, rent? Oh, the rents. So you, you, brought up, Pam, you brought up the idea of the rents during the wintertime. So there is a difference during the wintertime and the summertime during the rents. It's not that the rents go down during the, the wintertime. It's just that these less people search it. So what we do during the, the winter time is we have to be more aggressive with the rents because there's less people searching. So our theory is that we lower the rent to get someone in there quicker uh, so that property's not sitting longer. Because if your property sits for a month or so, you should have just lowered the rent and got somebody in there. And if your property is comes up for rent in mid-November, December, January, our theory is put a renter in there at a lower rent but get it rented for a 16-month lease or 15-month lease, so it gets you back into the summer of the following year and the next term, and then adjust the rent at that time. That's going to be better for you in the long haul because you, you want to be in the March through July time frame. So we're always trying to get properties into the summer season. So it's not that the rents are lower at those times of years. It's just that it's, there's less people renting. Where the school season for us is definitely the busiest time of the year. So when people are closing at this time of year, they definitely sit a little longer. It's not that they're, they're lower rents, it's just that there's less people searching. So that's, that comes up a lot, when, especially on new construction properties. Also, um, on new construction properties, um, when they're inside of a community, sometimes the communities, the amenities aren't built yet, right? So people think, oh, my property hasn't rented yet. Well, the place is not built yet. It's still a construction zone. The, the, the pool isn't finished yet. The fitness center's not finished yet. So it takes a little while for those those areas to be finished. And once they're built out, then the area, the properties will rent fine the year after. But sometimes investors think, but my place hasn't rented yet. But it's not because your property is not desirable. It's just that the, the community hasn't been built out yet. Does that make sense? Okay. And, and what we're doing now is infill lots. So we don't have that problem. So uh, when you go down the street, and you'll see, you can, you can look at these streets on Google, Earth. They're pretty old from 2011, so most of the lots are already filled in. But you'll see there's only one house that's going to be built. So it's not like a construction zone, like when you go into one of these HUDs, planned communities like with D.R. Horton or, or, or a national builder, where they're building everything, right? So who wants to live in that, you know, it just doesn't rent as well. Whereas with this one, now you go down the street, there's two new houses on that street, and you're the newest, nicest house, and it's a little bit different. Yeah, and the reviews that we're getting from their, their properties, if you, if you go online and look at the ones that are for rent compared to their properties, there's no way you can compare the two. I mean, they're the granite, all tile floors. They stand out way different than the neighboring properties that don't have these upgrades. There are, we're renting them much faster, and not only faster, but to higher-end renters because the, they're more desirable properties, so we're getting better applicants to those properties too. So I did want to mention real quick though, because I, you guys, you were mentioning about um, the interest rates and, and the properties. I, I was trained by Gene. I, I also learned from seeing over the years too, listening to everybody, that I, I also don't use my rental income for any of the money. I, I was trained to 
buy 20 properties by the time I'm 60 and pay them off, and that's going to be my own personal pension. So I don't use any of the rental income. I just keep paying it off and paying it off, and then eventually I'll have them all paid off, and then that's going to be my pension. So I don't use any of that, that money. I'm just going to keep paying it, so mm -hmm. much, whatever that's worth. So. You know, one thing that's very important is that we have a rent range. The reason why we have a rent range is because if you are a if you if you've done this over and over, you're going to take the first renter that's alive, well, and passes all the tests. Doesn't matter if that renter isn't going to pay you seventeen fifty, but you're not going to wait a couple of months to get a hundred, two hundred dollars more. You're going to take it. Why? Because it's rented right away. So that month you've got your fifteen hundred or fifteen fifty or your seventeen hundred, whatever it might be. So you rent it as quickly as you can to a good renter. And as Tommy said, some of these renters are really good now. So um, it's gotten better because they're higher end properties. When you see these houses, I'm sorry, when you see these houses, you, you will be amazed. Uh, it says right there, 99.7% eviction free. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, so, so it's also here. We've maintained the same monthly management fee since day one. I've never raised my prices. It's always been 8% monthly management fee with a 75% leasing fee, it's always stayed the same. Uh, we do offer 9% um, management fee with a 50% uh, leasing fee, uh, but most people prefer the 8% with a 75%. But we do offer that if people prefer a lower leasing fee, but we've, we've kept this forever. Also, our average tenant stays in our house over three years. Um, that's our average for all of our properties as well. So. What about eviction? I mean, Florida less, is a- Less than uh, one-tenth of 1% 1 of our properties get evicted every year. Mm -hmm. And it's a very quick process anyway. It's less process. than 40 days. Yeah. What is the average time to rent? Like once we do the uh, during the summertime, we have a guarantee that they'll rent within two weeks or we don't pay your first month management fee. <laughs> so it's very quickly. Uh, during this time of year, we still offer that same guarantee, but it can take a little longer just because it's the holiday season. So, yeah. We got five more minutes, uh, maybe a uh, uh, Ten minutes for Q and A. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Central for Florida. What about um, the sinkholes? <laughs> that, that's a great question. Oh, Rock has a good answer for that one. Well, you can't guarantee anything, right? I mean, it's like hitting the lottery, <laughs> kind of. I mean, it's that big of a one percenter chance, less than. But I can say this: that, that Osceola and Polk County, those are the only two counties I've built in. Um, they require compaction tests on the, the ground before you start. Okay, just to make sure, and we've got sand too, that's already a good soil, but they want you over 99% compaction or you can't build the house. And you have to uh, also raise your finished floor elevation of your slab up 12, 12 inches over to 18 inches, depending on the municipality, over the, uh, the middle of the, the street that it's on. So uh, you can't guarantee anything, okay, sinkholes. But I've personally never seen one, and I've been all over the state. Uh, except I've seen them on the no news once every six yeah. months. Pasco County has a lot of sinkholes, right? Pasco. The largest sinkhole was w in what state, do you know? Well, it's probably not Florida. California. It was only like the <laughs> last year or the year before. No, but I mean, in Pasco County, the insurance rates are pretty high because of the sinkholes. Pasco County, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I don't know about the uh, these uh, cellar counties. But. Depends on if it's a new build or an old build. And then what, what was the reason for not getting hurricanes is because it's in the center of the state. What, what is it? No, you get hurricanes anywhere. Oh, no, but somebody said they weren't worried about hurricanes. Okay, it's because we're, the way the house is built, okay? All four so, of us really yeah. aren't worried about them, and we all live there and deal with it every year. Okay. And it's really, really not a big deal. It, it, they make it such a big deal everywhere else in the country. <laughs> when you're looking at it on the news, it, every, it, because they have to hit their ratings. And really, you see a storm coming, you see plywood go up on the windows, or some people put their shutters up, some people evacuate, but really there's nothing to really worry about unless you're maybe on those barrier islands along the, the coast. Or you have an older house that's not built to cope. Well, other, all right. One of our clients told us this as well. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, so the last biggest storm that we had uh, the last couple of years, we had 500 work orders come in from the big storm came through Central Florida. It was only a category, I guess it was a two by the time it came through or whatever. We had 500 work orders. Uh, the majority of it was tree limbs and, 
and uh, a few shingles on the roof. The, the houses that lost the roofs were houses that needed new roofs. They got lucky. Uh, they, they, they All our <laughs> shingles are rated for strong or low end Cat 3 and, and 130 mile an hour shingles. Another important factor is Palm Bay, and this is what's still by us by one of our clients to purchase a house there. We haven't had a direct hit in over 100 years. We build in a non flood zone, so all of the houses that we build are not in a flood area. And as, as very well uh, Brock said, our finished floor elevations are 12 to 18 inches above the street level, so for drainage purpose, so on and so forth. So the way we build is much more important, I believe than anywhere else because our our building codes are so strict. So for us to withstand a little bit of wind and rain, they make us spend a lot more money in infrastructure. Concrete block, uh, you're not gonna see concrete block flying around. It's funny enough because from Florida, from Georgia and up, they build a lot of wood frame houses. We hardly see them in Florida. At least we wouldn't buy one um, and we wouldn't build one. So that actually makes a lot of changes as well. The quality of your windows, the quality of your roof, how you build your roof, the, the quality of the, 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 the construction, if you build cement block or wood, that is all very important when you're making a consideration to purchase a property. I have a question, I think this would be for Tommy. Do you do any rentals like Airbnb, like say near Disney World? No short-term rentals. No short-term rentals, okay, all right. Because I thought my thoughts were that okay, you wouldn't have to be renting it out for a full month. You could make a pretty good profit just over tourism. Right. Yeah, we don't okay. do any short term. Okay. Rentals. Okay. I'm gonna tell you something. Okay. Okay. Do you work? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you want another job? I can. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. Number two, there's so many now. Okay. There's so many. So unless you're gonna take this on as a second job, okay. And I have a very good person that does this, uh -huh. but um. You still have to do it yourself. Okay. You can and, get a really uh, big, yeah. sorry. Pardon? They've got really big, nice houses close to Disney where if you were thinking of your idea right here, yeah. you'd think, oh, I need to buy this for Airbnb. Uh -huh. But they're going, right now, I mean, what they're going, like a, you can get a, a room, a room costs double, double the cost of the Airbnb, okay? Like you can get it for a hundred, Twenty dollars a night for a Even four, more, five, yeah. six bedroom house with a pool. Okay. That's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to tell you something okay. else. Construction companies and big developers, they pay a 10 to 14 percent commission on new short-term rentals in certain areas in Central Florida. That's the only depreciating real estate that you can ever buy in the state of Florida is a short-term rental. Your management fees are going to be 20 to 30 percent, not 8. Mm -hmm. uh, your cost, your HOA is <coughs> extremely expensive. Uh, a lot of property managers, you got to use the ones that that complex actually gives you because they won't let Tommy come in because they'll charge 30%. Mm -hmm. uh, those properties, the used ones, furnished because you buy unfurnished and you got to have to furnish. So you buy a five bedroom house for $550,000. You can spend another $80,000 on furnishings, right? Mm -hmm. You're probably going to sell that house you know, a year and a half later because now you're only going to get the realtor 3% commission. So if that realtor is really smart, he wants the 14% commission. He doesn't want to sell your used property that is one year old to get a 3% commission, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're selling your house for 400 to 450,000, and now you have a $600,000 house that you bought if you really need to sell it. So every person that I have met, and I'm from Brazil, Brazilians love short-term rentals. That's a different story. It's called lifetime, li lifestyle mm -hmm. investment. Mm -hmm. They come in and they stay for two months, and that's their house, and the rest of the year will pay for the for the mortgage and the property taxes, and that's okay, you know, if that's what you want to do. But as a pure investment, those houses, I can I can guarantee you, almost, I don't own one, thank God, but they don't, they don't, they won't do you well. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, you hear somebody goes, "Oh, I bought a blah, and I'm doing really well," but you have to ask them yeah. how much of time, okay? Right, yeah. And the other thing is, when you buy that, you still have to. Paint the inside, paint the outside, keep up the pool, do all this stuff, and you don't realize the cost. So you better be making a lot of money. And unless you buy one of those in an area where they let a school bus come in, and because when you get tired of it, you're going to want to rent it out to somebody for 12 months. 99% of the people cannot do that in a short-term rental area. Okay. Now. There are people that buy condos on the beach and do pretty well, mm -hmm. but you're not going to spend a lot of money on a condo on the beach because you're not going to get but $100 a night. Mm -hmm. 
So what, you know, yeah. you see, yeah. and you know, it's, it's, it's all percentages. Mm -hmm. And then you have an extra tax. Oh, right, because you have to pay tax on it for yeah. short term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you have to pay, I don't know, a hospitality tax, whatever they call just, it. Just do your due diligence on them. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. They're not as pretty in the inside as they are on the outside. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, what you guys are saying is really uh, uh, short term rental, Airbnb, whatever, is really uh, is, is, a, is a perception, it's not a reality. It's, it's all, you know, when you come down to it, long term rental is much better for right. investors. Because it's turnkey and cash flow, as opposed to uh, you know all the all the hype, all the excitement associated with short-term rental and everything else out there in the public are really very misleading. It's not <coughs> what you think it is. It's not profit-making entity. And so far, so on. Am, am I right? Is that the takeaway? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hundred percent. Well, but well, you guys are learning much more than Central Florida, right? You guys are learning basics of 101, real estate 101, right? I mean, the value add this team brings you is <laughs> just beyond anything, right? Am I right? I mean, this is great. You know, you're getting information from the trenches, the real, the real stuff. I mean, no fluff, no puff. This is real reality, you know, accountability, uh, 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 transparency, everything, right? So. Is that great? I mean, this is years, years of experience, successful companies, uh, entities, and entrepreneurs. And you guys are already de developer with Wagner and uh, you know, uh, and uh, Brock and, and property manager and the whole team and Gene. It's just amazing, right? So you should be glad that you're here, but you learn a lot, and so I'm glad you're here. So if I can tell you a little bit about my personal experience. So I started investing into real estate, of course, in the downturn on the economy, right? So I bought a lot of property. I paid $28,000 for a two bedroom, two bedroom apartment in Metro West. And now it's about 160, maybe 165. So I did buy a lot of properties at the right time. And I semi-retired because my wife didn't let me if you were not here at the beginning of the call. <laughs> so I retired, I love motorcycles. So I took my motorcycle and I went from Key West to Alaska on my motorcycle and back. And that was fun. I retired, I spent one month traveling. I got home, I have two beautiful daughters, and you know, I used to go to the gym, come back home, 10 o'clock in the morning having my breakfast, and my, my wife looked at me and says, what the heck are you doing at home, you know? So retiring is possible through real estate, and, and I'm a living proof of this. So what we actually are telling you here, it works. Now, I don't want to retire, I'm working and, and I love it, but being able to retire through your financial independence in real estate is the key. Buy well, maintain your properties, have a great property manager, keep great tenants in, and you guys will be able to pay the property off in 14, 15, 17 years. Mm -hmm. Especially at those rates, guys, if you're planning, you know, and, and usually do a simple math. How much money do you need to survive once you retire? Multiply that by how many properties and the cash flow that's gonna give you, and you got a formula, you know? Take advantage of those low interest loans. They're not gonna be there forever. Gene has been, you know, in this business for a long time, and I can tell you. Also, take a 30-year mortgage. Don't take a 15, because you want to play it off in 15 years. <laughs> take the 30-year mortgage, take all the money that you get, and make two extra mortgage payments a year, and you got a 15-year mortgage. And if you can't make it, then you're not, you know, you're not under pressure. So. Give yourself a little bit of a leeway. Um, do what you have to do. It, all good. It's all really good. And think about it. And do your, um, you know, don't put yourself in a, a bind. Because I watch people sometimes and they want something so bad. They'll, you know, ma they'll make it, all, you know, and make it, you know, put a, what do they say, a round peg in a square hole, right? Don't do that. Don't put pressure on yourself. Did you had one question, didn't you? Oh, I was um, getting back to the uh, construction. Of the what's the new roof lights on your? They're uh, thirty year singles. They thirty, don't 30 also. <laughs> yeah. oh, we're running out of time. I, I mean, I wish we could do this all night long. You guys uh, just uh, thirsty for so much information and knowledge. I appreciate you being here. So you know, experience that we there's a lot of value associated with tonight's event. So uh, thank you for coming, guys. But once again, uh, before I mean, I have another speaker here, right? I mean, so. <laughs> Perhaps we should take a break before you do that. Uh, tomorrow, Gene and the team 
right? Yeah, we'll be here tomorrow afternoon. We're going to be here in this area around noon to 1 to 1.30. Well, we're going to, we'll be speaking again here at 5.30, is that right, tomorrow? No? Seven. What, 7? Yeah, but that's closed. Huh? That means it's closed for our clients. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just, just trying to figure out for our logistics. time. We're not going to go back to the hotel. Well, we'd like you here by 7. Okay, listen. Okay, so um, we'll probably, if you, if you call C-Wing, or, or um, you, you, can, you can text or call us and make an appointment, that'd probably be better for us. So that, you know, if you want to see us at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, we can come and meet you here. Yeah, but I'll be, I'll be across the street, right, at the right outside Triple A, right, meeting with people at 11.30 to 2.30, that's a three-hour block. So come meet with me and even Ken Renner might, might be here. I don't think Gene could be here, of course, between noon and 1 or... Whenever you want. Yeah, whenever you got tomorrow, right, in this area. So let me see. Uh, anything? Any any other uh, one minute recap you have? No, Jane? but um, uh, okay. So we have digital um, cards, right? If you want to get our card, we, can, <laughs> we have printed versions too. But we have digital cards, and buying from us is very simple. Work. Looking at our product. Oh, this is fun. Uh, we have a website. It's www. Realty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And. Reserving a house, you have to make uh, no efforts on paying anything online. You just go if you like a house. The cash flow sheets are going to be built in to the presentation. So you're going to be able to see Palm Bay, Boisiana, Kissimmee. All the cash flow sheets are there for you guys. And if you click reserve now, then we get an email that you want that house. How did you hear about us? You just mark C. Wayne. Uh, your name, full address, and everything else. We'll prepare a contract, which we use a very simple far bar contract, which is the Florida Realtors Association standard contract. We used to do 60-page contract that you know give you're gonna give me your third child, and that's not gonna work. So we make a standard contract right now, which is already approved by the for the Florida Realtor Association, and we'll fill it up for you some some areas. You get the contract. We'll make all the introductions. It's very simple to acquire a house in case if you guys are interested. What was the, I'm sorry, I didn't get the website here. Oh, Gina, uh, yeah, uh, actually we can pull it up for you. Do you guys represent two different areas? Yes. Oh, what's the different area? So, uh, Brock is a builder for Poinciana and Kissimmee. Uh, I build in Palm Bay. Where, where are those areas so relative to So, Palm Bay is on the I-95 corridor, which is called the Space Coast. And Kissimmee, Poinciana is more on the I-4 corridor that connects Tampa and Orlando. Poinciana is very close to this. Okay, luckily, by the way, I recorded this entire live event, so... Uh, yeah, I didn't do my hair or anything. <laughs> 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 no, you know, sorry. You wouldn't. Wait see how good Photoshop is done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is else? fun. So, oh, um, oh so the, real, the realty doctors. Mm -hmm. Yes, is your eclipse. No, for everybody. Yes, okay. But you'll see, I had a, a gentleman the first time we did this. Hold me up and I said, well, just go on there and you can reserve. She said, he said, you want me to buy a house like I'm going on Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> and he bought three that day. Uh, <laughs> kind of funny. But you can take, um, you know, uh, you know, if you pick one, you can put it on Google and you'll see what the street looks like. Remember, it's from 2011, so there's more houses. So, for example, there, it's, it's the exact same house on each of these uh, streets? Those are the pictures. Uh, we have four plans as well. If you need additional more information, we can share them with you. We have four plans. We have 3D renderings that we can share with you. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable just reserving out of what we're showing you on the presentation and online, we can actually do a call and guide you through the process as well. It's a pleasure for us to do it. Or if you want to come to Florida, even better. Um, you can come and see the house. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't know if I got the question answered. I'm sorry. Was Are they the same house? That Correct. It's so all the same. In Pontiana? Yeah. And the, uh, so you're, you're building the same exact We house, only build one model home. It's one a four model. two, yes. So okay. On the right-hand right side, yes. same, garage, same thing. and the For the single two. family. Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. Right. Right. There's only uh, like one on the block. Bring out time. <laughs> yeah, these are infill lots. Any other student questions you can talk in the hallway. We're going to break and afterwards. Well, yeah, give these folks our. Uh,
being here. So we can take a break. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We can take a break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So, uh, thank you, Thomas. Yeah. So we have to take a short break, five minute break. Then, in about five minutes, Mike and I going to talk about 1031 tax credit strategies, right? How to, uh, how, how to make money. I don't know. He got some great ideas. And I can't wait to hear it. Five minute break, okay? Come right back. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to forget to turn it on now. Just a little bit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.